I've seen a lot of really cool channels show amazing and interesting Airbnbs. And one of the ones that I've seen come up are these geodesic domes. Now they are super cool looking, but are they worth the hype? I'm really curious about that. So I booked a couple days in one while on vacation. And I have to tell you, I have some thoughts. So my question really was, are they worth the hype? Is it worth investing in? Is it worth staying in? Is it really like camping in a tent or is it like cottaging in a structure? That was kind of where I was going. It feels like it's somewhere in the middle, but what is it really? The one that I booked had a kitchen with running water, a dishwasher, a microwave, a fridge, a stove, obviously a cooktop, as well as a bathroom, which had running water, hot shower, and of course a sink. It also had air conditioning and heating if you're there in the winter, because these are all season, which I thought was really interesting. It had a huge, beautiful deck on it that included a hot tub luxury, which is like glamping at its finest, right? And it also had a fire table and the view over the valley was absolutely stunning. Now it sounds like I'm giving all glowing reviews, but uh, there's some things, there's some things we need to talk about. Some things that you do not know unless you sleep in one of these things that I learned. You have to stick around to the end to find out if I think it's worth it or not. So let's start with the obvious one. It's flipping cool. Like it is really, really neat to look at. I found a lot of my friends online were commenting about the picture I posted of us sitting outside with the dome in the background, like, that's so cool. Where are you? That's really neat. Like it has a presence. You're essentially staying in a bubble and it's just different. I mean, it's, it's, really, really interesting. It's kind of like an A-frame, although it's, you know, nothing completely revolutionary. It's just different. So, you know, it stands out from an architecturally, you know, aesthetic of the space. So absolutely looks super cool. It's a really interesting concept with the whole one side having, it's not glass, it's plastic, but that you can see out, you have this kind of like giant viewing window as well as this skylight up top which you can lie in bed and look out at the stars and just enjoy the view. So from an aesthetic standpoint, overall, it's just neat. And it's kind of fun to say, look where I'm staying. It's definitely, you know, Instagram worthy or TikTok worthy or whatever platform we're using these days to show off a picture. Heck, YouTube, I'm doing it. It definitely has a presence and that is, really a big highlight about this dome, this geodesic dome. Here's a con. <laughs> I just mentioned these amazing window spaces, these expansive views, including the skylight. Now, what I really appreciated in the one that we stayed in, and I think most of them will do this, the big half wall that you have in front of you, they did have curtains that actually went across, which was great because obviously you're thinking you're in this giant bubble. It's a lot of it is, you know, exposed to the outside, meaning like A, privacy and B, just light. The big opening in the top that is covered, it's not open, open. It's got a plastic um, roof there that you can see out of, does not have any way to cover it. <laughs> And when you're sleeping under it and the sun comes up, she bright. Like it's just bright as day. So you're not sleeping in, in this dome. It's a very minor con. Like, honestly, it's not a deal breaker by any means. It's just, I'm a, I'm a morning person, so I didn't really care. But if you're not a morning person, that could probably drive you nuts. So my solution would be, you know, definitely bring um, one of those little sleep masks or something because it is very bright inside the dome once the sun comes up and there's no getting around it. <laughs> like unless they don't have that little opening on the top with the plastic, which really is a highlight because if you do have a beautiful starry night, which we were unfortunately did not have, it was completely like raining the first day and then we had, um, 
what do you call it, cloud cover the next day. So we didn't get the view of the stars, but it was still kind of neat because we could see the treetops and like it was still a very nice view. If you have like the starry night or wherever, it, it just, yeah, it could be really, really stunning to have that view, but just know in the morning you're gonna be woken up because it's gonna be bright. So that's just like a, a little thing to note. Okay, a huge pro that I've already mentioned. You've got running water. I just, for me, my days of camping, I have, I have memories. I'm from Northern Ontario and I have memories of the, the tent and the outhouse and like it's scarred inside of me. And I, I don't do camping without running water. And I know maybe that's pretentious. I don't care. I don't like it anymore, <laughs> but I did a lot of it when I was younger. So big part for me is I still do enjoy a lot of the other camping experiences, but I definitely feel that glamping is more of my like speed. You know, that's more where I'm gravitating towards. I want a lot of those creature comforts. Didn't have a TV, didn't care. I don't care about that stuff, but the running water, like the toilet, I could even, I could even do without the shower. Worst case scenario, like if I had a lake, I need a toilet. That's my big thing. I need the toilet and like really everything else is just bonus. So for me, that was a huge pro is that it had a running water flushing toilet inside the dome, not an outhouse. That was really important for me. And I don't have any cons about that. <laughs> That's just a win, 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 win. Like I don't see how there could be any negatives when you have all of the amenities. And they had a dishwasher, which was actually like, what? I was like actually a little shocked about having like a dishwasher. I knew there was a hot tub when we booked it, but I just thought, oh my goodness, you don't even have to do dishes. Like say you booked it for a week, you're good to go. I mean, you are living life if you are staying in one of these domes. There is. You're not short on anything. So that was kind of a, a really nice bonus. Of course, having a hot tub. I have a hot tub. I love my hot tub. So I thoroughly enjoyed having a hot tub while on vacation in, you know, the forest. And along with the hot tub is another pro. And that is the fact that there was this huge deck that was, I guess the dome kind of sits on this giant platform. And I really thought that was interesting because we were able to have this great view. They had done a glass railing on two sides and it was absolutely beautiful to sit there with the fire table going and enjoy the view, enjoy the sunset. The second night we were able to get the sunset, so that was absolutely gorgeous. And then of course the hot tub and just sitting with the beautiful, they had the like twinkle lights hung up. It was gorgeous. That being said, where we were staying, there wasn't like any kind of area that was really flat. It was kind of like on a hill, which is fine. They had brought a game for my son that was snakes and ladders, but you had to like flatten it all out and it was quite large. And they, with all the furniture that they had, we really didn't have space to play it. So not really like a con, just more of like, it's not somewhere that you're gonna have, like you can't play like a lawn game or something, you know, like you just have really the deck and even some of the stuff that they had brought really didn't work on the deck, but I really did appreciate them you know, attempting to like entertain my child. <laughs> so the space was quite large. That was one of the pros. And I mean pro in like, there was a lot of floor space for something that really, I don't think is massive, but because of the way that it's set up and the way that they utilize the space, there was a lot of just space, which I mean, not that you really need a ton of space when you're camping or on vacation, but I mean, it was just nice that you had room and when you have kids, it's nice to have some extra space for them to, you know, run around and such. <laughs> I thought it was really neat that these are all season. So in this big bubble space, they have heating and cooling and they had it with this little, um, it's like the Samsung thing on the wall. So you could like adjust it with a clicker. It's so easy. You know, we found it a little bit cold when we got in, so we just turned it down and it was great. Like it was I thought it might feel almost like a greenhouse effect, even though it is covered for most of it. I was like, oh, I wonder if it's gonna get like super hot in there. But I found that the temperature was like really easy to control and really nice inside of the dome. So I don't know if that was the location or just the way that they built them, but this one in particular, like I didn't find like we were cooking inside of the bubble, you know? <laughs> All right. 
we gotta get into the one thing. The one thing that really, ooh, it's not a good thing. And I don't, I think, hmm, I wanna word this the right way. I'm being very honest because this is not sponsored. This was not something they could control, and I wanna point that out. I believe where they are located is typically super peaceful and quiet, I think, I would assume, on normal circumstances. It was like on a gravel road, literally in the middle of nowhere. However, <laughs> said gravel road was being re-graveled and that means giant gravel trucks. And on top of it, I think, because it is in the middle of nowhere, the way these companies work when they're doing it, they work long hours. So they were starting at like six in the morning and it was going until, I don't know, seven or eight at night. Like it was insanity. And the trucks were driving down this road like full tilt. Why I mention that is a big giant gravel truck driving down a gravel road makes a lot of noise. And inside the dome, it amplified it. It was actually quieter outside than it was inside the dome, if that makes sense. Like it just, it made the sound reverberate in a way like it was, it almost made me jump out of my skin in the morning because the truck sound was so loud. We did not have a peaceful, relaxing experience, which I do believe that normally that wouldn't be the case. But why I bring it up is because I think in this particular setting, they're in a forest, it's literally in the middle of nowhere. Those roads are probably not that heavily traveled normally. So, you know, the odd car wouldn't be a big deal. Even the odd truck wouldn't be a big deal. Because of the construction work that was happening, it was a massive deal. It just, I was really disappointed because I wanted to relax and enjoy it. And until they were done at the end of the day, that was not, a, not like literally not an option. Like you just couldn't enjoy being in the bubble when the trucks were going by. It was just too far too loud. So if you're booking one somewhere and you're not booking with this one, and I do think this one is quiet 99% of the time. Like I don't think it would normally be like this. I think it was just an unfortunate like set of circumstances. That being said, kind of know the location because if it is near a road or like anything that's kind of happening, you're going to hear it. That's the difference between a structure versus the dome. It is more like a tent with all of the amenities versus like an insulated wall, right? So you're gonna hear it a lot more and there's like no getting away from that. So they do have a rule there, you know, after 10 o'clock is quiet time. And I can really understand why, because you can hear everything. So you really don't want it to be noisy. And I think on the most of the time, like I said, if it hadn't been for the regrading of that gravel road, which of course they could not have planned, because I'm sure they just showed up one day and started doing the work. Um, that really sucked. Like it was unbearably loud inside of the dome. So that was one of those things that I'm glad I know about it because it's just something that if I'm ever going to stay in one again, which I don't see why I wouldn't, I really did enjoy it. And I thought it was a really interesting experience. It's kind of like, it's, it's not, you know, like a typical cabin, of course. It is more like a tent experience, except with everything else. But I would need to know what is happening around that location. Is there a road? Is there an airport? Is there like, I think on a lake in the middle of nowhere and making sure there's no construction happening, of course, would be more than needed. Like that's, that's the, would be the thing that would, you know, make me stay again. Cause that just was terrible. <laughs> and I was really upset. Like, I'm not gonna lie. And I wasn't upset with the owners cause I know that they couldn't have planned for that. But for me, like this is my vacation and it was like, I live in the country, I'm used to quiet. And it was like living in the middle of a big city. Cause it was just like, 
I don't know if you've ever heard those trucks, but they're loud. So it just sucked. That sucked. There's nothing I can say that the, the sound sucks. So be prepared. Also, if you're like trying to have a romantic getaway, people can hear you. <laughs> so just sound, sound, sound is something that you're going to have to consider no matter what. <laughs> Okay, I have one more um, pro and con, and it's about the design of the space. And again, this is very personal to whoever is constructing it, whoever has put it together, designed it. Like, you know, no two of these will be exactly the same because design is unique to the owner and whoever they had designed it, whether they did it, brought people in, whatever. I thought it was really nice. It was modern, it was clean. Every one of their domes has a different theme, which I could so appreciate that. I love that they had fun with that. They had like an adventure dome that had like video games in it, like an arcade thing. Like it was really, really neat how they planned all of their domes. What I also love from a design standpoint is that this was in a forested area and there was there will be about seven domes all together and they had a walking trail that was done with all really well marked signage. They had the outdoor lights, they did the twinkle lights. They did not skimp on making it a truly leveled up experience. It was not like camping. They had the little thing that does the smelly stuff with the steam, anyways, whatever, and the sounds, the nice calming sounds. It was very spa-like. And each dome having its own look, they embraced it. So ours was the farmhouse, it had the black and white checker pattern, it had like really nice, um, beadboard wall like it was just honestly I was very impressed with the way that they had done it it wasn't overly expensive furniture of course this is an Airbnb things are gonna get ruined most of it was like Ikea I know I was googling stuff you know some stuff from Lowe's Walmart etc like Amazon but you put it together nicely and it looks fantastic and I was super super impressed they had these really cute unique fridges that they have in all of them very like retro looking I loved it, I thought it was a great touch. I They really thought about the intention of the design within the space, within the patio, within even the property. Like there was a gate, it was just really well designed. And I think that's one of the things I could really appreciate because you don't need to spend a fortune on finishes and materials necessarily to have a really well designed space and it's just how you bring it all together and they did that you know they had robes they had it was like the whole hotel vibe spa vibe well designed um, well executed little details were thought of the sign that welcomed us you know natural plants um, just Every little thing that you would expect, you know, little extras, like they had left us a bottle of wine and they had left some snacks for my son. They had left games for him to play. They thought about all those things and that's something that is very much based on whoever's renting these spaces out. Some people are gonna, you know, really run with it and, and take it to the next level and create an experience. And I have to give Balsam Ridge credit. They really nailed that experience down there was just one thing. <laughs> you know I can't say all good things. The loft area, although really cool because you can lie and look through the bubble, the stairs to get up to the loft, horrific. They were bulky and heavy duty and I was not worried about them going anywhere. But it was like you're just climbing like straight up and I don't know, maybe in your 20s it's okay, but like I... I I have to pee at night. <laughs> like I've had a kid. I found that like the trying to get up and down it was just a little bit up wasn't so bad. Coming down was a little bit harder. But if you had something like a cup of water or your laptop, like it was this vertical, like little vertical steps. And it did have something to hold on to, but I just I didn't like that. I wish it had been it would have ate floor space, but they really did have an abundance of floor space. So I almost would have rather them just put in something a little bit more proper, even if it was like a spiral staircase or something. I don't know. I just did not like the stair situation. It was not fun to go up and down. I was a little bit nervous. And on top of me being nervous, there wasn't like any way to like 
close the top of it so there wasn't like a gate there wasn't uh even just like a string or i don't know there was nothing to close off that opening and it's a pretty significant drop down so when my son was up there because we all wanted to watch a movie and look up at the thing because we had our laptop there which and they had wi-fi which was great um i was so nervous that he would like jump out of bed and like fall off like just fall out and i am a worrier and i I will fully admit this. I think of things that probably most people don't worry about, but I was just like, Ugh. like I didn't like that just being open and there was no way to block it. Like that part just, I didn't like it because it was just, it was far too high. So that was one of my little things from a design perspective that I'm like, Ugh, I don't like that. Also, it made it not super accessible. Now the couch was a pullout couch, so they technically you could sleep down there, but I mean, pullout couches aren't that comfortable. We all, I think we all know that. Um, and it's an Ikea couch or very similar to an Ikea couch. So I'm sure it really wasn't that comfortable of a pullout couch. We didn't even try it, but the bed upstairs was very comfortable. So like you want to sleep in the bed in the loft because it's really designed and set up and already made and fresh sheets and all that stuff. You know, the other one we would have had to set up and not a big deal, but just, I was like, I don't really want to pay this money to stay here and then sleep on a pull-out couch, you know? So that was like my only other, like, I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't like the loft. I almost would rather the bed be downstairs than the loft just be like maybe a yoga area. And maybe they had some like that, but I just didn't, I didn't like the sleeping loft. <laughs> and that could be a personal preference, let's be honest, because of, you know, maybe some people don't care about the stairs or don't have to pee at night. I don't know, so many things. <laughs> So overall, is it worth the hype? Mm, I would say yes and no. And I hate to be on the fence about that. I think it depends on where it's located and how it's put together. So the one that we stayed in, if the construction hadn't been happening, I think I would have been like, yes, 100%. It was the most amazing experience. But because of the sound issue, that really made me go, oh, it's more like camping. Like you have to really appreciate more of a camping vibe because you're gonna hear everything. It's like being in a glamour, glamorized tent. So yeah, overall, I thought it was a really great experience, but you could have had an A-frame sitting on that same deck, had a lot more soundproofing, still had a skylight and really had the same experience. Do you know, that's why I say it's like, is it worth the hype? I don't know, because you can set that type of feeling in the same setting without the dome and have like a little bit better of a noise barrier, but that really depends on the location. So I think it's really interesting to stay in one because just overall, it's a cool experience to be able to say you went to one and to go to one. I think it's a really neat looking structure like it just looks really interesting it's really eye-catching i worry like longevity because it's not like um a hard like wood material like it's literally like plastic and stuff like could a tree like what if a tree hit it or a branch fell like could it get ripped easily could it get damaged the windows are like a plastic so they're not you know like will they get over time you know how it gets that like film almost like where it's not as clear when it's not as new so for me i'm thinking more like maintenance wise like to invest in one i don't know i'd be a little bit nervous about like the longevity of it and how much does it cost to maybe like have it a new piece of plastic put in or or fix it and all of those little things so yeah i think to stay for a night 100 percent do it it's fun check out the location make sure sounds a good thing to invest in one as an Airbnb, I don't know. We were doing our homework just to see like how much they would cost. And although because of their popularity and their hype, this place is booked out for like a year. So like people are going, they're making their money back tenfold, like no shortage of like income stream. But from a maintenance standpoint, I just feel like, you know, it costs about, I think 70 grand to get one of these things all put together and it would be more expensive for an a-frame but at the same time like i feel like you're gonna have to pay to like redo port portions of it so i guess it really would depend on the cost of like maintaining the bubble structure itself i think the metal structure would be fine but i'm thinking more from a design standpoint of like the plastic and the fabric and all the stuff that goes on top that could be easily punctured 
that's where I get concerned. Like how much does that cost? So from an investment standpoint, I don't know. I don't know how often and how much it would cost to replace some of those components. And that would be kind of my only concern of doing that. But you know, obviously building a tiny house is gonna cost you like 150 grand. So it depends and depending on like costs of getting materials there. So, you know, I don't know. There's there's a couple different ways. There's a couple different ways to look at it. To stay in 100%, to invest in, do your homework, think about long-term, think about maintenance. So that's my take on a geodesic dome. I, I know a lot of people just talk about like the stay, but I really wanted to dive in a little bit more about the, the pros and the cons of what it was like to be in one. And I hope you enjoyed that as well as like to invest or to stay and all those fun things. So I don't know, something different, something that I don't normally do on this channel. Let me know in the comments below if you're here, still here, <laughs> you enjoyed it, I think. Um, do you like this type of video? That would be great to know too. And uh, yeah, any feedback would be great because you know, like constructive, don't be rude. Just, did you like this type of a pro con thing? Anyways, okay, I'm blabbing. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed today's video, YouTube seems to think you'll like this one next. So definitely jump on over and check that one out. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And until next time, bye.